Hello and welcome to this week's Warriors HQ. Coming up on this week's show, highlights of our win over Rassi 92 at Scotsland, reaction from Finn Russell, plus we look ahead to the big 1872 Cup match at PT Murrayfield. It was a fantastic night here at Scotsland on Friday when the Warriors came out on top 23-7 over Racing 92 to move to the top of the Champions Cup pool. Here are the highlights from the game plus reaction from man of the match, Finn Russell. Highest for Glasgow. The scrum half will deliver it away himself. Russell mixing things up and it works. And Seymour gathers it and he's on his way and he's got Hogg to the left. Hogg still has work to do, still has work to do and finds Strauss who on the occasion of his 100th game for Glasgow gives the Warriors the perfect European start. Racing players were offside. And then the burst through the hole from Brown, and Brown will score the second. Oh my goodness! Racing offside, there's a penalty. Slap bang in front of the post. Here goes Russell, though, he's got his eyes on much more. The performance again, this is from Russell, and now Price goes through, and just as he did in Paris at the start of the second half, Price scores the try that you are tempted to think ends the debate right here, right now. It's Rassinger here ending this match on the front foot, however. And the, the long locks of Zarzewski took it through, and then the try is scored. Finn, back to back man of the match against Racing, how does that feel? Uh, no, it feels brilliant. I mean, I'd say getting man of the match is good, but I mean, the way the team performs is probably more, more pleasing than uh, getting the actual man of the match myself. Uh, so it's a team, team win both games, so, but I'll, I'll take it. Can't complain with that. Really came firing out the blocks today. How much, what was the energy like out there, and how much did you enjoy playing that running game? Yeah, we came out fast and we scored in the first five minutes, um, which is you know, similar to them last week, but we managed to you know, keep our foot down and, and you know, scored pretty quickly after that again. So we managed to build up a lead pretty early on, which kind of settled everyone, I think. Um, and playing running rugby out there, um, you know, they had a lot of big guys, so they sort of, it seemed like they sort of struggled and got used to that pitch. So uh, it's definitely turned into an advantage for us. Um, but I think they everyone enjoyed it, but saying that, 30 minutes to go, everyone kind of enjoyed it too much and switched off. So um, we've got stuff to work on, but it was good. favourite Christmas present would be, oh yeah, an Al Kellogg signed rugby ball, love that. It would have to have been a Bergos jacket I got at Christmas time with my granny, when they, that was the in thing in school, so I got a Bergos. What is um, a barbecue? Uh, best Christmas present I ever got was a dive knife. It's pretty good. <laughs> best Christmas present was, actually last year my mum and dad got me a North Face body warmer and it made up for all the 20 years of rubbish one. No, I'm joking. No, the best Christmas present I've got, I think, is, I think about, has about, must have been about 10, 11, something like that. I got a PlayStation, PlayStation, and it was brilliant. It was probably a drum kit that I got for, it must have been about 14, uh, 14 years old. Got a drum kit that year for Christmas and played with it for years. The only one I remember from when I was younger is the Rubber yeah. Control Bows. Um, I think it was an Al Kellogg sign shirt. <laughs> 
Every year you do get socks and t-shirts, don't you? It's oh, rubbish. I've got my memory foam pillow. I've got a pair of socks from my grandma, that's pretty bad. Worst because of present socks. I get this present every year, but it's just socks from my mum every year. The worst Christmas present I had was uh, probably a pair of uh, jammies. It was a onesie. Worst, an England rugby shirt. Disgusting. Uh, an Al Kellogg signed rugby ball. <laughs> <laughs> Warrior Nation, you boys missing something? Come to our place on Boxing Day, if you want to try and win it back. See you there at the first leg of the 1872 Cup. On Boxing Day, Glasgow Warriors travel east to face Edinburgh Rugby at BT Murrayfield in the first leg of the 1872 Cup. And we spoke to former players Al Kellogg and Chris Patterson, who reminisced about previous encounters. So I, uh, I played my first four years at Edinburgh, we played with each other uh, against Glasgow um, and then I was uh, nine years at Glasgow but any truth in the rumour you pulled the Glasgow shirt on for one of I these did. games? Yeah. Yeah, not for these games, no. Uh, my first professional involvement was the Glasgow Caledonians which would be 1998 I think uh, and I played against the two Maoris, I played uh, sorry, against Alston a pre-season game and then I played against the Maoris so I was under 21s at the time. Uh, Tommy Hayes was a standoff. Luke Smith was a reserve standoff for Glasgow, uh, and they were both injured, so I played a couple of games. Uh, so yeah, played for Glasgow. Caledonians no, before. Not against. Not against you. No, in this. Nah, not in the, the, the 1872 games were all always for Edinburgh. I remember. Uh, I remember playing one for Edinburgh at, uh, at Far Hill, and it was 2006. So it was a year that I'd made the decision to move over to Glasgow. So you were still with Edinburgh? Still with Edinburgh. Uh, and uh, Todd Blacker that was coaching. And I was meant to play a half, and then Scott Murray was going to come on in the second half. I don't <laughs> think you were playing. I think that no, you I'm and Ali Hogg and all those guys, all the guys were sitting in the stand. Mm. And, uh, and Edinburgh at the time were my favourites to win that game. And I can't remember who it was. It might have been Johnny Beattie, but somebody ran over the top. Kevin Dukatrick ran over the top. One of the Edinburgh players scored the try under the post. We went in at half time, uh, about 30 or 40 points down, and Todd came to me and said, What do you want to do? You want to stay on? Or do you want to come off? There's only one answer you were allowed to give. <laughs> <laughs> we lost the uh, Edinburgh lost that game. Uh, it's funny you only remember the ones you lost when you played for Edinburgh. Uh, well, I, I, I agree with you completely. <laughs> I remember playing in the, in the snow at my side once as well, uh, in Jim McLaren and Dick Centre standing on me vigorously but <laughs> because it was kind of half frozen pretty had mouldies on so that made absolutely no difference. <laughs> the pair of us just looked at each other and burst out laughing. Yeah, big man as well Jim. You never want the emotion to get in the way of the quality that's on yeah. show so but then I actually think that the way it's structured now should add to that because when it's a week apart emotions are a big part of it especially the time of year. <laughs> uh, ruining, <laughs> ruining Christmas or making New Year but uh, yeah I agree with you that it's about the talent on show out there. It's Good. about uh, um, Kinghorn showing that he, what he can do against Stuart Hogg uh, or one team showing what they can do against the other, depending on who's got the upper hand in the first I one. think BT Murrayfield pitch is phenomenal because if you think back to a lot of the games we played in, it was tough going, it was you know, muddy pitches, but now phenomenal surface. BT Murrayfield for the first game and then on that official surface. And May uh, for the last game, we're going to get some top quality rugby. That's all for this week. We'll be back next Wednesday at 5pm on Warriors TV with highlights of the big 1872 Cup match from BT Murrayfield.